Hey everybody, this is Davis over at Con Freaks and Geeks, and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Pop Culture Gems. This is a series where we talk to amazing creators, artists, cosplayers, voice actors, and so much more. If you like the interviews we do uh, with the amazing guests, give us a thumbs up or subscribe to our YouTube channel, the CFG channel on YouTube, or you can listen to it on any podcast services out there, uh, like Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, what have you, Any anyone, anywhere, where, where we are always there. And uh, if you want to check out the fantastic geeky content all in one whole area, go to our main website, confreaksandgeeks.com for the whole package. My guest today is a force in the voice acting world. He's played characters in gaming and animes like Grand from Grand Blue Fantasy and Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, Genta Doi from High Score Girl, uh, Yushiro in Demon Slayer, and the ever so popular 9S from Near Automata. I would like to welcome Kyle McCarley to the show. How are you doing, Kyle? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I am <laughs> trying to stay warm right now, <laughs> as, like as always. So <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a surprisingly it's it's more complicated than I thought it was should, it should be, but it is. It, it, it's it's a it's a fight. <laughs> oh, well, man. I appreciate the warm welcome. You make me feel not so chilly. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. I definitely definitely enjoy it. Uh, but let's get into it, man. Um, so. As always, always ask us for everybody. Let me just t- tell us a little about yourself. Like, who is Kyle McCarley? Oh, sure. Um, uh, uh, well, as you as you mentioned, I am a voice actor. Um, you gave a couple couple credits from from my list, uh, uh, which which is some interesting choices in there. High score girl. That's not one that gets brought up real all that often. You know, it's funny to me though, like, like your voice is very distinctive. So like when I look, when I, when I'm, when I'm watching and listening, cause this is the stuff th- theoretically when I, when I go through the list, it's a list of character of gate of series or games that I've played that I'm like, Hey, that sounds like, okay. <laughs> that sounds like Kyle McCarley. So yeah. So, okay. so that, that, yeah, it's like, <laughs> that's the little cool. game that I like to play to be a little different, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um uh as as for who i am i mean i'm uh aside from being a voice actor i'm i'm a married man uh a father of fur babies three of them <laughs> we've got two dogs and a cat you might hear one of the dogs yapping because he's been particularly boisterous lately um <laughs> Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm a big hockey fan, a uh, big Colorado avalanche fan. And, uh, and I, and I love board games. That's, that's oh, nice. a little about me. <laughs> oh, I love that. What kind of board games do you usually like to play? Do you like playing those, like, you know, Settlers of Catan or the kind of, you know, like Monopolies I'm, or what? I am big on, well, I'm definitely bigger on, on the newer generation stuff, like the Euro gaming style stuff. But, uh, I, I was big on the party game type of things like like mm-hmm. uh like one night ultimate werewolf or oh, yeah. or um dixit was a lot of fun uh i'm trying to think of some of our bonanzas one that we've been playing we we were playing a lot pre-pandemic mm-hmm. um there's just there's there's kind of an assort it's a wide variety but i was big on the simple big group 30 minute max playtime stuff and mm-hmm. uh, and and now on my Twitch channel, I do a, a board game show with some buddies of mine, and we've been getting into the more the the heavier like hardcore board game stuff. And I'm starting to appreciate that more. I for a <laughs> long time I avoided that stuff, and now I'm kind of like, you know what? There's a, there's a time and a place for these these more lengthy, sh- smaller player count games. So. You know those those long lengthy games like usually call those friendship breakers because that's what because pe- people get yeah. on edge you know yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's like no but I'm definitely with you like uh I think the werewolf one was that, was the werewolf one the one where you have to, like you use your phone right uh, uh for it where you have yeah. to choose like who you got to find out who the werewolf is and stuff and right. uh, and take right. them out yeah I love yeah that, you're right those games are kind of are really fun <laughs> so. Uh, that's a lot cool. of fun, that's yeah, cool. and it's over in five minutes or something. Mm-hmm. It's 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 really really fun to be able to just play it real quick and move on to the next round. Or okay, we've played it four or five times. Let's move on to something else. 
Right. When the game where where you have to pause the game by leaving everything in the board and then say, okay, we'll come back another time to do it. The, it, the game's too long. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, well, I'm uh, starting to appreciate those kinds of games now, but uh, yeah, yeah. That used to be my mindset for sure. Yeah, but now it's like we don't have a choice. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, now it's kind of like we're we're now we're bored. Now we're just like it, we're we're stuck in our houses sometimes, and we're like, you know <laughs> what? It's like let's just go with it. it we'll just, we'll accept it. But I bet you when everything kind of goes back to normal, you'll be back on that wagon saying this is oh, not acceptable. <laughs> yeah, back on the horse of no, no, three hours is too long to be playing the same game. <laughs> <laughs> I got stuff to do, <laughs> you know? Oh God. All right. Well, I mean, well, growing up, um, uh, were you a part of the like early anime fandoms, you know, like, uh, and if so, like, did you have any favorites and uh, favorite series when you were, when you were growing up? Yeah, I, I've never, I've never been a huge anime fan, but when I was, mm-hmm. when I was growing up, uh, Toonami was an after school block on Cartoon Network. So it was, it, it was airing around like three or four o'clock start time or something like that. Uh, so I did watch, I watched Toonami religiously, or at least as much of it as I could get home in time for, cause, mm-hmm. uh, living in the central time zone, I think there was like an hour that was like iffy for us, yeah. but, uh, yeah. But uh, I, I watched a lot of DBZ. Um, I watched G- Gundam Wing was my was my favorite for sure mm. as a kid, uh, which which th- made made me real. Uh, I, I realized kind of a childhood dream. I didn't r- fully appreciate that I knew I had when mm. I when I booked Mikazuki in uh, Gu- Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. Um, cause that was my, that was my first, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent now, but that was my, my, my first lead role in an anime series. Uh, uh, first time being, it, it checked off a lot of boxes for me. First time being on TV, um, a, a whole bunch of firsts in my career. And I got to play a Gundam pilot and Gundam wing was my favorite anime as a kid. So, uh, like I, I showed up to school in middle school on a regular school day in full cosplay before that was even a term. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> so that's pretty, that's I was a pretty, pretty big fan of Gundam Wing. now, th- but, but other than, other than the stuff that was on Toonami, I didn't, I was not a huge anime fan. I didn't, I, and I didn't stick with it, uh, the way that, that I know a lot of diehard anime fans did. You know, back at that time though, like, I mean, but back in the day, like during that time, I mean, anime was incredibly sparse, though. I mean, like they it didn't was. even give it. it yeah, was. so, so like, I mean, or, or like, I think in America, like our re- the window when it was like, you, I mean, don't get me wrong, anime has been around for forever. Like, you know, a- a- Akira. Then you had like, you oh, know, yeah. BattleTech and all that stuff. But, but when it was seriously, when there was more s- serious diversity when it came to anime back in that time, we didn't have it. Like, <laughs> like, uh, uh, really, yeah. the opening of that yeah. was like Dragon Ball and the Toonami block was where in pokemon and all that stuff but like yeah but uh no i mean but it, Broke into I, the mainstream yeah 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 so like i mean the, like what you're saying i mean with gundam and then if gundam is the one that inspired you to cosplay at school which i have to say give you kudos to because i was like man you are more man than me to ever do that <laughs> <laughs> but uh like uh, <laughs> but like uh, uh, the gundam i think, the gundam I think we had a so it, the the story okay. behind that is that that me me and my buddies uh in middle school were like we had all picked a character from Gundam from Gundam mm-hmm. Wing that was our character like and there are there are a slew of Gundam pilots in that show so there was a group of like 8 or 9 of us that were all like I'm I'm this character I'm that character I was Catra uh and I think we had me me and me and me and one of my buddies who whose pilot was Duo mm-hmm. uh we we had some some like school project thing where we were flying i don't know some some something to do with like little model airplane things or rubber band based plane things that we were trying to to go a certain distance so we had a loose excuse for wearing pilot costumes for the day I don't really, I'd have to ask him like why we decided to do that on that particular day, but I know it wasn't just totally out of the blue. It was still, nobody else was showing up in costume that day. 
<laughs> I will say this though. I mean, if I wish if one of y'all were like hero, when you know, because like, you know his his attire was bicycle shorts and a singlet shirt, and then just go up to space. It's like wow. Okay, yep. you're just yep. you're just business casual, I guess, aren't you? <laughs> and I remember the the dress code. They the dress code at the school for some reason they had an issue with with my friend's duo jacket. Like he wasn't what? allowed to wear a jacket throughout the day. So he That's had, weird. he was like, but it's part of my costume. I got to wear it. <laughs> it's like, let me in. Not, 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 not wearing that jacket. You won't. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's <laughs> odd. That's very odd <laughs> for them to, to I, uh, I, yeah, kinda... I don't, I, again, I'd have to ask him what, what exactly happened. He, he's got a better memory than me. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, but it's cool, though. I mean, like, I mean, uh, what I love about that story, though, is the fact that you said, like, I mean, that Gundam kind of step made you the step in, st- like, was the Iron Blooded Orphan was the stepping stone that was that kind of got your career more like more serious or more motivated to I do mean, more uh, more roles? It, uh, no, I I was I was breaking in uh, to to the industry for sure, mm-hmm. but uh, but it was it was a big it was a big stepping stone into into bigger and better things because it was it was it was kind of a breakthrough moment uh, in terms of in terms of the the kinds of roles that I was booking cuz up to that That's point awesome. I had worked on I'd worked on Durarara and Fate Stay Night and mm-hmm. uh and uh uh Your Lie in April I think I was actively working on when I booked Gundam so I was I was working on a few projects here and there but always as supporting characters I I I'd, mm-hmm. I'd never gotten like that was the first lead character that I had that I had booked so it was it was a big breakthrough in moment in the career for sure. Yeah. That's cool, man. And then I have to say though, kind of back to your Gundam wing though, like you took Catra, was Catra your favorite Gundam though? Uh, like out of, out of all of those, out of all yeah. the five of them. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, it, it was, I, I, I probably like, if I had been watching it in isolation, I probably would have identified duo as, as my favorite, character in the show because he's the coolest character in the show everyone loves duo though everyone loves yeah. duo <laughs> yeah but, but since we no, were since, cool. since all of my friends were all picking one character you know being mm-hmm. able to analyze and go you know what catra is the character that is most like me i'm going with him that's cool yeah. I like that, but you know it's funny. Like if I had to choose a Gundam for me, it uh, uh, I really liked uh, G Gundam, and the Gundam that I I, I kind of associate myself to was Mexico's Gundam because <laughs> I loved for some reason that Gundam itself. It's like for them to say, "Let's put a sombrero on the uh, on a giant robot," and I'm like. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Things happened, and y'all said yes to that, and I and I'm definitely on board with that. So, <laughs> so yes, let's go with that. Mexico Gundam is my favorite. I wish they made models of it. <laughs> do they not? Surely they no, do. They they've don't. got they've got gunpla for everything. No, Cal, I have been looking for years for Mexico a, a Mexico Gundam model, and I have never found one. Like, wow. <laughs> I have never found. I would love to get that just to say that it, that it exists, but it does not exist whatsoever. Like, if, That's if a tragedy, you, it is very much so. There's, uh, it, there's so many, and the whole the whole franchise exists to sell those toys. You know, <laughs> no, so. right. I know it's like they're just like they're just, it's not popular enough apparently I need to start making angry letters to Bandai I, I don't know we'll see and uh, <laughs> I uh, I popped into your Twitch stream yesterday like uh, uh, randomly and just and I'd have to say like oh, okay there was so much mayhem with your friend when you were playing uh, alien, yeah. Uh, yeah. aliens and uh, well first off what game was that I never I never saw that game uh, that version of aliens that, before was that so so you you tuned in uh, to my Thursday night broadcast, which is uh, which is the Quarren stream. We started doing it during during the pandemic, mm-hmm. with nothing better going on on a Thursday nights, and it's just me and my buddies playing a variety of multiplayer video games. Started out as the co op Quarren stream because it was just four of us, so we were focusing on co op games. Uh, mm-hmm. Which Alien Swarm Reactive Drop was the game we were playing. It's free to play on Steam. Um, and it's mm-hmm. like five or six or ten years old at this point. I don't know. We we end oh, up going wow. we end up going to the well for for a lot of the games that we 
that we pick out for that broadcast because we're always trying to pick stuff that because now the group has grown to I think we've got nine guys now that anywhere from six to nine of us show up on it on any given Thursday night. And uh, so we try to pick games that are either free or super cheap uh, Mm -hmm. and that and some of the guys don't have great Internet connections or great hardware to play games with. So we pick stuff that's that's low resource uh, demands in terms of games. So we go, we go for some obscure old games to play sometimes on that broadcast. Oh man. What, what was one of the most obscure that you played on that, uh, uh, on the broadcast before? Uh, gosh, the first one that I, that I want to mention is regular human basketball. That <laughs> might, I know what you're talking about. Might oh my, be my God. favorite. It's, it's a super <laughs> indie game that I think is $5 on steam per copy and as soon as i saw the the trailer that they put out for it i was like guys you gotta (laughs) pony up the cash for this one we have to play this so it's teams i think you can have up to 10 players in the game total and it's a one-on-one basketball game except the basketball players are giant robots that have a bunch of buttons inside of them and you as the players run around inside the robots and push the buttons to control them and make them play basketball against each other. <laughs> it's absolute mayhem. It's like lovers in a dangerous space time, but oh, wow. two robots and with more people. So more chaos and you can jump into each other's robots and try to <laughs> try to sabotage and stuff. It's so much fun. That is hilarious. <laughs> you taught. Yeah. You were not kidding when you said really abstract and, and yes. different. Yes. But, <laughs> That is awesome. And you do that and you do this every Thursday on Twitch? Every Thursday night. That's 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 honestly it's a it's a Twitch stream that is just an excuse for me and buddies of mine from high school and college to get together and play video games. <laughs> Fair enough. Doesn't take much to get that, to have that nowadays, but still it's a, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed I enjoyed watching like the craziness when y'all were trying to like I think y'all blew yourselves up and I was like, what is going on? Why oh, is just like all this stuff? That happened a lot last night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alien Swarm was a game that was designed to be a four player co-op game and <laughs> they at some point added eight player support so we were playing with seven people on maps that were designed for four with oh, more man. aliens forming us so it's just it's just utter chaos <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny that's great uh and uh uh like Kind of going back to your like you know your voice acting career itself, um, sure. like uh, was there a role that you played that was harder than uh, uh, than than you expected when you when you took when you got it? Oh man, there. I mean, there's 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 a variety of of challenges that'll come up uh, in the process of of this career, um, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of them are more technical than than they are craft based. Uh, but the first thing that comes to my mind um, when you ask that question would be uh, I, I, I'm the voice of Alm in Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia, as well as Fire Emblem Heroes. Uh, my first session for that character, I don't know if it was the way that, that some of the lines were written or, or what it was, but for the first hour or so, it, it, every time you're playing a new character... There's mm-hmm. there's a feeling out period where you're trying to l- like settle into like what what is the head space for this character? What makes this guy tick and and what are what are his character trait his defining character traits? You kind of figure that out as as you go along in the in the early stages. Uh but with Alm in particular, I remember in the in the first hour or so of the very first session, I really wanted to make him kind of a little bit snarky. I wanted to give him some wry uh, smirk humor to to a lot of his deliveries, and that is not the character at all. And they kept on having to reel me in and go, no, 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 totally straight. He he's not. There's no sarcasm in this line. He means what he's saying here. So I had to I had to turn that part of my brain off for Alm. Cause I just, I wanted to be sarcastic cause that's who I am and <laughs> wasn't, that wasn't in there for him. 
<laughs> was that really da- uh, so like uh oh so you just naturally gravitated to what you naturally what you naturally are but really it was he was like the polar opposite of he's, what well, you're he's, supposed to have. i mean he's 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 anime jrpg pro tag you know he's he's mm. cookie cutter like go getter honest like genuine always supports everybody and and there were just some lines in there, I can't remember anything specific, but I know there were some some things in there where I was like, "Oh, so he's kind of poking fun at this person." No, he's not. He's not making fun of them at all. He means exactly what he's saying. Oh, he's literal. <laughs> he's he's very literal. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> have you ever done? Have they? Has there ever been the time where you where where you can have those kind of you know decisions to make the oh, character sure. the way you wanted it to be? Okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's 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 a very collaborative process. It's just there's you you also have to recognize that you're trying to you um like you're bringing yourself to it, but you're also trying to honor the creator's vision. And especially when you're talking about localized content like a JRPG that's coming from Japan or an anime that's coming from Japan or something like that, then as an actor who's localizing the game the the game or or dubbing the the show you're now also trying to honor the original Japanese creation as well as the American director and and writer that are collaborating with it. So it's a very collaborative process. You don't, nobody gets carte blanche in the whole thing. Everybody's Mm -hmm. working together to create uh, uh, the, 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 the character and the story that you're telling. That's that's cool. That's cool because like uh, I've always want like the the whole process, especially well, especially specifically like anime and stuff like that. Like uh, like I didn't know how much freedom an individual like uh, like voice acting would be that way specifically since they're like you were saying they built the character specifically in a specific way. They've already done it right, and then, and then when you're when you're doing English dub versions of the same character, it's like do they give you that same kind of freedom to kind of you know go with it and uh, uh, and stuff? So just yeah. I, I was just a little curious about that. That's pretty cool. It 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 varies for sure. I mean, when I uh, I'm wearing the T-shirt today, I'm uh, from for Infinity Train. When I I mean that that character, I feel like I had a little bit more um, freedom to create. I, I I voiced Simon on that cartoon show, and so I there's a little bit more room because of the fact that I, it's it's original animation as mm-hmm. opposed to uh, uh, dubbing or localizing. So there's a little bit more freedom there, and you're also earlier in the process. the the scripts um, The scripts have been written, obviously, but uh, the animation's not done yet. We're working off of storyboards, not even full like animatics, but but storyboards. And in some of those types of shows that where it's original anim- original animation, the storyboards aren't even done yet. So mm-hmm. when you're the, the earlier you come into the process as an actor, the more freedom you have to kind of make it your own and ad lib a little bit here and there maybe hey i've got an idea for this line can i can i pitch this to you and we'll just see if this fits or not um but it, it's it it depends on on the project it depends on the show i know uh for video games typically you kind of stick to the script that's in front of you you might add a little bit here and there just like pre-life or maybe a, a stutter or a stammer or something but you're not really going to change things all that much um whereas anime just by the nature of the beast uh there's going to be a lot of lines that come up where because you're trying to record to picture and trying to match the mouth flaps um there's going to be a lot of stuff that comes up no matter how good the script is how how great the adaptation is where it just doesn't fit those flaps so you have to figure out something else that's typically the director's job but you as the actor can always go hey i've got an idea let me try something else and sometimes i'll i'll throw stuff out there that's completely different from what's in the script completely different maybe than what the literal translation was for that particular line but it still serves the the purposes of the scene and the story so sometimes they'll they'll take it oftentimes they won't but you know it's it's kind (laughs) of It's, it, yeah. it varies from project to project, I guess, is the point that I'm trying to make. <laughs> it's better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. I kind right. of understand. <laughs> Definitely understand that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, and uh, to you, uh, like, uh, is there, uh, is anime voiceover harder than gaming or vice versa? Uh, uh, and uh, if so, like, why? It's, it's different. It's just a completely different animal. Um, mm-hmm. uh, because it's, it's, it's anime acting for a dub 
uh, whether anime or, or live action dub. I do a lot of live action dubbing as well. Um, that's very technical because of the fact that you're trying to make sure that it looks like the person on screen or the character on screen is saying what you're saying. And they, and that's already been locked. You know, the picture's already in place usually. So having to fit within, uh, someone else's performance or somebody, somebody's animation adds, adds a little bit of a, a left brain element to a typically right brain field of, of creating stuff so it's it makes it more tech it's definitely more technically challenging mm -hmm. um uh but uh but uh but then at the same time video games um they're they're the the script just the nature of of the medium there's a whole lot of stuff that isn't necessarily sequential order so you could be jumping around from because the player could play things in a different order so there's a whole bunch of stuff that, that can come in at various points in the playthrough and trying to figure out, especially if your character goes on a big arc throughout the story, being able to, to find nuance that fits in any situation, no matter when the player might happen to get there. Um, and, uh, and then also, d depending on projects, I've, I've worked on some video games where just because of the way that the that the production is being run or the, the way that the game is structured i only see my character's lines in the script i don't know context for for where <laughs> oh all that stuff fits so that that poses a whole different set of challenges uh so it's just it's just different oh man like i would even know how so like how do you even adjust for that <laughs> those are kind of situations where it's just your you your line specifically like so you well, in a situation like that you you kind of like it's it's funny because it's it's not uncommon to have that when you're auditioning for projects mm -hmm. and in that case you want to make specific choices so you you kind of make up your own context for the audition and and add your own flavor to it and it could be completely off base for what the actual context is in the in the project that you're auditioning for but because you make a specific choice you stand out better than if you play it play it safe and do something generic when you're in a, an actual work environment and mm. all they all they're giving you are your lines I mean, the first thing you can do is ask, mm -hmm. you know, what's what's the situation here? What's the context? Why am I saying this? Uh, you can infer some things from, you know, context clues, like based on the line. OK, I know I'm talking to this character. I know what what like based on, you know, we're we're not far removed from the last line. I kind of know where we're at. I can assume where this fits into the conversation. But mm -hmm. as a general rule, you do play it a little safer there and, and give performances that are a little bit more generic and a little bit more, this will fit no matter what the context is. <laughs> and oh, that's wow. a decision. That's a decision that the director has to make too, where they're like, because I've, I've directed projects where I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. Give me a couple <laughs> ideas and let's see. And then I'll listen to, to the take and go, okay, that's the one that's going to work in more situations. We'll go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. And, um, out of like all the characters that you voiced, I mean, you've, you voiced quite a bit of them. Um, uh, which one would you say is the closest to your own personality or if there's some, I mean, you don't have to be specifically one. It could be Ooh. multiple ones if you have. Oh man, that is <laughs> such a hard question to ask i mean like his, every every character i book is is has got to be somewhere inside of me i i think because otherwise they would have given it to somebody else uh but uh <laughs> i would say honestly the character that i feel like i slipped into the easiest was probably 9s from near um, I don't know if that's because I necessarily, well, I feel like at, at, at least in the early game, 9S is, is a pretty straightforward character, uh, uh, in ter at least th the way that I, I wrapped my head around him. I was like, oh, I get this guy. I know exactly who he is. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and he lives very near to my baseline personality. I think at least in the early game, 
Uh, and then he goes on a, on a very interesting <laughs> story arc throughout the course of the game and, and kind of ends up somewhere completely different. But, you know, we all, none of us are two dimensional people. So we all, mm. we, you know, we, we have experiences that are, that are outside <laughs> of the baseline all the time. So I, I think, uh, that, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I think, I think the re really the the reason that he was so easy to slip into though was because of the fact that the, it's it's just so well written. Um, yeah. that's, he was a that's, practical thinker. I will say that like he was definitely a practical thinker. Like he was very like straightforward on like you know with the rules initially. I definitely could see where you're coming from with he that. He was, but, then, but he also had a little bit of that wry per flavor to him that I wanted to give to Alm and couldn't. There was still mm -hmm. a little bit of that 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 playfulness in there. Uh -huh. Um, so I could, I could tap into that pretty easily. Um, and, uh, and, and uh, honestly, it's just like the, the near franchise, the, the Draken near franchise, I've become such a big fan of Yoko Taro and everything he does. That series uh, is insane. It's, it's amazing. And, oh, it's great. and it's, and it's just so the, the story is just so well crafted. You it, it's, it's not hard to comprehend why characters end up making the choices they make. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if you wouldn't make them or, you know, you don't if you even if you disagree with with the choices that th that they make, you still understand why, where they're coming from and why they're doing what they're doing. So it's it that that's to me probably the reason that that 9S was so easy for me to to just jump right into it and, and, and go for it. That's fair. That's that's fair. Uh, did, are you are you like. Did uh, have you played? Oh well, no, you definitely did play. I saw you do the stream with uh, Kira, Kira, like a couple of years ago. But it's oh, been yeah. a while, yeah. But uh, do, are you going to be get? Are you looking forward to the new one, a uh, near replicant? I'm I believe. So in so excited! April? Yeah, I'm so excited! I can't wait to play that game. <laughs> Man, it's like uh, it, it's like uh, it, it's weird because like when near Automata came, it, it, it didn't really you know have a lot of fanfare when that came out. But like the people who did play it, like I mean, I've played them because I played the original one. I played Dragon Guard and all that stuff. Uh, it's just like I don't know how this game cannot be like a bad. It's it, it's pretty much a borderline masterpiece in my opinion. Because with the music, the the style, everything, like you were saying, Yoko Taro was uh, was great. Plus, which all I mean, what you and your cast uh, like, Jeremy, you, uh, Kira, like it added to it was just a really good experience uh, overall. So like uh like i think yeah yeah no problem but like <laughs> gotta give props to, to to give props you know <laughs> but uh but like i love uh but i loved it but just to say when they said replicate i'm like okay i have no idea what this game is about because as always with near it's like i don't know what to expect and that's the one thing i really definitely love about like what to expect on the uh on the upcoming one which is making me really hype <clears throat> for it well it's there there it's I think they're like they're loosely referring to it as a remaster of uh, Nier, the first one, like the the prequel to Near Automata. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But um, so like, I've I've learned a lot about this franchise from from my fans and from having now <laughs> gone back and played through some of the because Automata was my first experience to the whole franchise. I played through uh, like after being in it, and mm -hmm. I then played through the whole game. I fell in love. I went back and played original Near or some of it. I went back mm -hmm. later on. I went back and played Dragon Guard three. Then I and and came back to the rest of original Nier or vice versa. I don't remember. Anyway, I played through those two games as well now. Um, but the 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 story behind Nier Replicant version one point two two whatever the hell those numbers yeah. are they're in the official <laughs> title. Um, <laughs> it's uh so back when the the first Nier game came out in Japan. The main character, Nier, was Yona's brother. It was a young man character. And oh, for okay. whatever reason, for whatever reason, they decided when they ported it over to the U.S. that the U.S. audience wouldn't relate to that young man protagonist uh, as well or something like that. So they decided to make him the father figure. They made him father Nier instead. So there's two different versions of the original Nier game. Uh, and I think Japan ended up with both of them at one point. I think they ended up what? putting out. Uh, so there was Near Replicant, which is brother mm -hmm. Near, and then there was mm -hmm. Near Gestalt, which is fa Papa Near, Father Near, which is the one uh, that we got in the states. Mm -hmm. um, the 
that was one of the PS3, right? Like the old, yeah. the original one. Okay. Right. Okay. So near replicant version 1.2234, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. That is a remaster of near replicant, the original release. And I think they've added some new stuff to it as well. Cause they just put out like nine minutes of new footage today on Twitter. Yeah. On yeah. The game. And, and watching it, I was like, that seems like it's a little different from how that played out in the story in the version of near that I played through. I don't so, remember the original by the original. It's been so long for the first one, but, uh, yeah. uh, but like, uh, I, I hate what, I hate what Japan does that <laughs> when they're like the, Oh yeah. U S U S crowd won't, won't relate to this. It's like, this is near. Most of the stuff is going to be really kind of unrelatable in general. Like I don't Otaro know hated the decision too. And that's why yeah. he's like, no, no, no. Now that I have some clout, now I get to say, no, we're doing it this way. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, come on. On. it's it's like it's all over it's like the the final fantasy uh numbering back in the days like back in the 90s it's like oh they don't the americans don't know rpgs that might be too hard for them so let's just give them right. four six mystic quests we'll build one from scratch and <laughs> see what we're gonna yeah. do with that you know i mean uh, it's like uh give us more credit please japan come on we're not stupid <laughs> <laughs> but anyways i but, get uh, it because there's there are definitely cultural differences but mm -hmm. yeah i i agree i think uh okay <laughs> there are times yeah. when it makes sense and there are times when you're going a little too far Okay, there's a difference between like saying, okay, this wouldn't make sense in an American's uh, thing. More like if it's like something that's specifically like a uh, cultural thing in the country of Japan, or if it's taking place in Japan, and then it's like it makes sense right. to them, but wouldn't make sense to us. I can understand that, but they're making fantasy right. worlds and they're making these decisions of like saying, oh, they won't understand the specific dragon on what, like where he's coming from. It's like, there's no such thing as a real life dragon. Why are you making that decision for us already? You know, it's like, there's no, there's no <laughs> I think, understanding. I think it's just, it. it comes, it comes from, it comes from a financial place, right? It's, it's the decision of like, well, more people will buy it in, in America. If there's less of that fantastical element, I mean, that's not the case anymore, but you know, right. 20, 30 years ago, maybe they thought that nah, th that fantasy stuff is too nerdy for Americans. We got to, we got to water it down. I don't know. Oh, the, <laughs> oh or, how about this one? This is, a, this is a really random one. What about street fighter? You remember street fighter two, when they said, okay, we're going to make bison, uh, original bison. His name is Vega when he originally came out. And then they changed the names because they're like saying because they were uh, they made like Balrog was 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 uh, was was actual his name was Bison and they 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 decided to do a flip because they were saying that they didn't want they didn't want to confuse Bison which is Balrog as Mike Tyson and I'm like that is the most pettiest thing I've ever heard. like why That's would so you do dumb. that yeah yeah it's like I mean <laughs> it's like those kind of decision making is like it, but you kept the names but you just changed it in circulation. It's like, okay, yep. <laughs> but <laughs> it's just funny. I'm just saying people are weird. <laughs> That's where it comes down to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I didn't know this uh, until recently, but you also made like, you know, you also uh, are a part of doing like, you know, script adaptations for like, you know, Crunchyroll series. Um, I've been like fascinated by that yep. process by adapting scripts, like, you know, from Japan, uh, to the U S and, uh, since you've done it firsthand, I just kind of want to get your take on it. Like how involved, uh, do you have, uh, do you, ha uh, do you have to adjust the script since like, I'm sure there are situations that are not directly, you know, translatable, like translatable. Oh yeah. So, um, <laughs> I, 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 I got into script adaptation, uh, adaptation because, working as an actor, I worked on one too many projects where I was like, this script is bad. And <laughs> I want to be part of, <laughs> I want to be part of the solution to the problem. Um, and it's not easy. It's, it's not an easy thing to do because mm -hmm. you are trying to a make dialogue that sounds the way that people talk mm -hmm. B uh, make dialogue that fits the character and fits the story and C. uh, also, you've got to stay true to like the original translation, at least as, as best you can. And D, also, you got to fit the flaps and the timing. So mm. there's a whole lot that goes into it. It's I think it's I think it's extremely underappreciated. I, I, I think uh, as as far as 
um, dubbing goes. Uh, and honestly, with with video games as well, when you're localizing a game, but uh, that that I think all of that adaptation is done in house at the mm-hmm. studio with somebody who's hopefully paid appropriately for it. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, when it comes to anime, like it's, I think the writing, the the script adaptation is first, second, and third in order of importance for mm-hmm. uh, for a dub. Then comes the acting and the directing and the engineering and all of that stuff, which all of that stuff is important to to making a good dub. But uh, I I feel like a a great actor, a a great script can make a bad actor sound pretty good. And a great actor can only do so much with a bad script. Mm -hmm. So I I think that the script is, is a number one most important piece of the puzzle. Um, Very underrated. You're totally right about that. It's extremely underappreciated and, and, and underpaid. Um, (laughs) uh, (laughs) As, as far as uh, how it, how it goes, it's, it's, uh, I, I, uh, the, the the process kind of goes where somebody has already done a translation, somebody Mm -hmm. who speaks both the, the original language and, and the, and English, or at least some English, enough English to get to convey, this is what they're saying, literally. Uh, they put that down first and, um, sometimes all I get as, as the script adapter is the, the subtitle script basically, which Mm -hmm. is an adaptation. This is something that I I don't think a lot of fans totally understand. I think some fans think that if they're watching a subtitled anime, they're getting something that's, that's more true to the original meaning. Mm-hmm. But that's not the case. It is it is also an adaptation because it, it's just with a different objective. When we adapt stuff for a dub, we are trying to localize a little bit more of the cultural stuff, but we're also trying to fit that timing. When somebody's adapting for a subtitle, they're trying to keep things brief enough to where you can read text and still see what's happening on the screen. So they're they're summarizing things for you in a subtitle adaptation. So it's not it's not the true uh, translation any more than, than the dub is. Um, so anyway, I, I work off of a translated copy of the script and I go through and I, and I watch what's happening on the screen and I try and y- you have to speak it out loud, kind of sort of in the, the, the character so that you kind of get a feel for how they, uh, how they, they sound. Cause you don't want an old man to, to say words that sound like, a teenager or, or vice versa. Um, right. so you kind of like, I kind of put on voices that are kind of like if, if I'm writing for the young anime female pro tag, I'll kind of, I'll kind of do something like this while I'm bada, 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 while I'm saying the lines out loud and I I'll preview it once just watching the Japanese. I'll go back and play it. And, and like, I'll look at the, the, the translation while I'm watching it. Um, and I'll always watch an entire episode with the translation next to me before I start adapting. Uh, and then I'll go back and play the line and say out loud the first thought that comes to my head on, will this, sometimes it's like, it's literally what the translation column says. Let's see if that will fit. And if it does, great, we'll move on. If it doesn't, then I'll try and add some stuff to it. Or if it sounds a little bit, you know, not entirely the way that people speak, I'll try and finagle it and change word order or or sometimes completely throw it out and write something new uh right. and you just kind of go go line by line until you've got the whole script done <laughs> wow that sounds like a very strenuous <laughs> strenuous process in my imagine especially since like i mean it, series it's, and it's like pulling episodes. teeth it's it's <laughs> yeah it's 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 thankless it is not a lot of fun it is solving a puzzle and it can feel rewarding when you get to the end of it. Uh, mm. In my experience, most of the time it doesn't. It's just like, it's, it's kind of like, Oh, thank God that's over. All right. On to the next one. Oh, God. <laughs> that, sounds, oh, that sounds horrible. <laughs> just like you just, I don't, you just, I don't do it a lot. I, I really, <laughs> I like, I I'm, I'm, I try to be very picky about what, what projects I take on now as, as a writer, because it's, it, it takes a lot out of me and, and oh. kudos to the folks that do it on a regular basis. What, uh, what series have you done, done that process in? Uh, I did the script adaptation for a little over 
half of the episodes of Gundam Build Divers. I did mm-hmm. a couple episodes of Inazuma 11 Ares. I did uh, the second um, Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel movie. I did uh, the last 10 episodes or 15 episodes or whatever it was of Rising of the Shield Hero. Oh, wow. um, uh, 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 I did a few episodes. I did, uh, let's see, I wrote the first five episodes of Great Pretender on Netflix. Highly recommend that show. It's a you lot wrote of fun. That? I wrote, the, I, I adapted the first five episodes, I directed the second five. Um, what? Kind of oh, dude, that, that yeah. series is awesome. <laughs> I it's have to so say, good. it's so good. I love it. Yes. And then I wrote the last four of the of the series. I think. Wow. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Man, that is crazy. I I I really hope that there, like there's going to be a new season of that. They have to. I mean, they left the door open. They left the they door left so the door wide open. open. Yeah. everyone's retired. Everyone had the happy ending, and then you found that. Oh no, I'm not going to spoil yeah. it. But no, yeah. guys, need to, you need to watch Great Pretender, dude. That is Please. a very it's so good. It's so very good, good series. And yeah, I'm really see. proud of how it turned out too. Oh yeah, it, it literally came out of nowhere to me. Like it, like uh, uh, I mean, because like I don't usually watch anime as much. I usually, I kind of like I'm more like reading them because you get the whole okay. story faster. But, like I mean, personally, but like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, but like, uh, uh, but there's, but like when sometimes when Netflix does these exclusives, I just sometimes I just, I watch a couple just to see if I, if it catches my interest and like. When Great sure. Pretender came in, I was like, "Oh, so this is like an Ocean's Eleven kind of situation," and then it just gets better and better. It's just like, "Oh my god, yeah, yeah, definitely love it." <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that was like one of my picks for last year's. Uh, well, second seasons, I would say. But uh, uh, okay, got one more question for you, and this is actually <laughs> kind of funny, and it, uh, because uh, okay. like like we said before, you know, I saw you do the stream with uh, with Kira uh, playing uh, near near Automata uh, a couple years ago, <clears throat> but like, and I talked to Kira specifically like not that long ago uh, on this, and she told me that one of her regrets was that she was not able to get you to do a nine S cosplay with her as two B. Like, I was wondering <laughs> <laughs> what would it take for you to make that that uh, happened you, know, you don't want a sad kira buckland come on <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's true you don't yeah. oh uh uh you know what let's let's get everybody vaccinated and uh and and that's that's my big wish for the year or the next two years or however long it takes get everybody vaccinated and uh and and we'll talk <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna send that to kira too uh, so so we can see if we make that happen she said she tried she tried yeah. a lot she tried to choke she's like she gave you a choker or something she and did. i'm like she oh. did she did and my dog <laughs> ate it not that long ago because it was hanging on it was hanging on one of my mic stands and i think it fell off and the dog <laughs> ate it up so it's gone now Oh no! Okay, well, don't tell that to Kira. <laughs> that's the case. Yeah. I'll have to get a new one. Oh no, that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but man, hey, well, Kyle, Kyle, thank you so much for uh, geeking out with me. As always, man, it's really it was really cool talking yeah. to you. As always, it's Thanks for uh, having me. It's really cool. But uh, if, if in this part, we just like to uh, we usually like to reserve this part for if there's anything that you're working on that you can like, discuss or plug. If you like to plug, you know, Twitch, whatever. Is there anything you like to plug uh, for what you're doing? Yeah, um, if if you guys are into watching watching stuff on Twitch, I'm on twitch.tv slash Kyle McCarley. Uh, in addition to the Corin stream, which we talked about, which is a really chaotic broadcast, uh, I play board games on Friday nights. So tonight, actually, as we're recording this, at 7.30 Pacific time, I play board games in a very interactive show called The Board and Barrel with some friends of mine. And on Saturdays at noon Pacific, uh, I play games pertaining to my voiceover career, uh, stuff that I've voiced or or stuff that is a prequel to the stuff that I've voiced in the case of Dragon Guard three um, or near. Uh, so, oh, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, um, oh. And and stuff that I'm working on. Uh, uh, 
What can I talk about? I, I can talk about, oh, Monster Hunter Rise comes out next month. I am the voice of Buddy Handler Iori. And, um, and I think Mr. Osamatsu season one is finally coming out on Blu-ray next month as well. I think it's next month in March. They're finally uh, putting out season one. I've been working on Mr. Osamatsu for the past, worked on it for three years dubbing it and uh and and we announced the cast back in august 2018 i think at, at a convention is that and, the one uh, with, the, with the siblings like the six tuplets? The sextuplets yeah, yeah yeah oh my god i it's totally a forgot very about funny that. show it's a very <laughs> funny show and i'm so glad that it's finally seeing the light of day in some capacity yeah the dub <laughs> that is what what took like was like was it a limbo or something like why did it take I, so long that's crazy. I, I couldn't I could not begin to speculate. I I think it had something to do Honestly, uh, my theory, I'm probably saying more than I ever should, but mm. my theory <laughs> is that the they decided Viz decided to to do a big show of it at that con what convention was that? Anime Anime Weekend Atlanta. That's where we were. Um I think I think they decided to make a big show of it because that was that was that's one of the big anime cons. Uh, where all the different publishers need need to showcase something, and Viz was like, "We don't have much else. Let's showcase this. Let's see if we can get some interest. Maybe we can put it on Toonami or something." And it didn't pan out for them, so they just kind of um, shelved it for a while. We didn't work on it for like ten months at one point, and then we came back to it. Uh, I don't know. I, again, I'm probably I probably just said way more <laughs> behind the scenes information than I ever should have, but we did finish working on it. It's uh, ready and it's coming out on Blu-ray next month. So okay. pick up a I, copy. I'm def- <laughs> I think it's on. I think it's actually on Amazon Prime right now too, or in Prime Video, so you could actually watch the series. Yeah. No, probably not dubbed yet though. Uh, dubbed out. Uh, the first season? Oh, no, you're, you're probably right. Yeah, you're probably right. It's, I, the, it's you probably care. just the subtitle, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not gonna... the, yeah. The, the, the Blu-ray is, I think, the first time that the dub is seeing the light of day. Jeez, they need, yeah, they need, they need to get back on that. I didn't even know that you like the the the, the, the man. Yeah, I need, I'm, I'm, yeah, definitely go check out his Twitch. His Twitch is crazy. It's fun. It's definitely fun. It's definitely good to watch. Uh, <laughs> Thursday did, nights did, are absolute chaos. <laughs> uh-huh. Did the Saturday though? Like, uh, did, did, like, have you played your character like in like you know Grand Blue Verses and stuff like that? Like, have you done that? I've yeah. I've played through the story of I've played through the story of Grand Blue Verses, uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Verses. I played through. 13 sentinels aegis rim not that long ago mm-hmm. uh uh let's see what else uh, very underrated God Eater game. Three. yeah oh it's so good mm-hmm. um 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 and then a lot of the near franchise fire emblem uh 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 yeah and now i'm making my way through river city girls kind of trying to bridge the gap between 13 <laughs> sentinels and monster hunter coming out so Fair enough, man. That's great, man. That's always awesome. Hey, well, anyways, once again, thank you so much, Kyle, for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, guys, thank and uh, thank you for listening. As always, you can always check us out uh, on any podcast services out there uh, at the end of the, uh, of each week to check out each episodes and hear hear awesome people like Kyle on the pop uh, pop culture gems or go to our youtube channel the cfg channel to watch the video format of this uh and just all you have to do is just give us a like or subscribe to the channel and you will not miss any further episodes well this is davis signing off from con freaks and geeks and y'all take it easy perfect all right